Let me ask you a question. If you're sharing a stream clip, would you rather share a clip like this? Oh my God. Or would you rather share a clip like this? Oh my God. Hello everybody, what is going on? My name is Steggy and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how you can take your stream clip sharing to the next level. Now, whether you're a seasoned creator or somebody just starting out, sharing your stream clips is a really great way to market your brand. Social media platforms like Twitter have much better discoverability than live streaming platforms and in some cases have been the big break for creators. So if you are streaming and you're not sharing your clips, you're not maximizing your potential and you're really just kind of selling your channel short, especially when sharing your clips is such low hanging fruit. So now that we know why clip sharing is important, let's talk about how we can take that sharing to the next level. Now, in the marketing world, one of the first things you learn is when you're sharing video clips on social media, you need to optimize them for the platform by rendering them out in a one-one aspect ratio, which makes them square. This is because when you compare that against the traditional 16 by nine aspect ratio, your video is gonna be twice as long. So when users are scrolling down their timeline, your video is gonna be taking up twice as much room and that's twice as much the opportunity for that user to stop on your video. This leads to more engagement on that post, including retweets, shares, likes, comments, etc. So how do we do this? Well, first you need a video editor. Next, there's a couple ways you can actually go about it. The first and easiest way, but I don't really recommend it, is by cropping the video where you're basically just hacking off the sides of your rectangle video to make it square. The problem is you're losing information that way, so I don't really recommend it. Instead, what I recommend is letterboxing, which is basically placing two bars above and below the video to fill up that square frame. Now, they can be black bars, they can be white bars. I'm sure you've seen those Facebook videos with like all the emojis and the white uh, letter boxes. So you can do that. You can even go funkier with like magenta or lime green if you really want to be eye catchy. But what I personally do is I actually make the letter boxes videos themselves uh, with a Gaussian blur added to them. So I'll teach you how to do that in a little bit. Now, when you're in your video editor optimizing your clip for social media, it's also a really great opportunity to add some motion graphics to really burn in your channel name on your clips in case they get reshared to sites like Reddit, Imager, um, either, even YouTube compilations. And so people will know where that clip came from and it's a way for you to market your channel, even if you're not the one posting the video on those different platforms. Now, you might be asking yourself, that seems like a lot of work to do for just one clip especially when I might be expecting to upload three to five clips just in a single stream. Well, what if I could tell you that everything we've been discussing, you can do with one button press because that's what we're gonna do in this video. Now to do this, I'm gonna need three things. An Elgato Stream Deck, Magix Vegas, and OBS. Now you could possibly use alternatives to achieve the same result, but like in respect to Magix Vegas, like maybe you could use Premiere for this. However, Premiere costs 10 or $20 a month, whereas Vegas, I bought for $20 in a Humble Bundle. You can really just get a great deal on Vegas if you just search around a bit. And in respect to Elgato Stream Deck, you're really gonna be relying on its robust multi-action capabilities to execute all these complex tasks in one button press. So to begin, we need to configure OBS. If you saw my video on adding an instant replay button to OBS, we're basically doing the same thing and setting up OBS to overwrite files when you save the replay buffer. To do this, first go to settings, then output, and make sure output mode is on simple. Then click this checkbox to enable replay buffer. Then here is where you set the length of the clips you create. I recommend between 20 and 30 seconds. Now remember, this is just for short stream clips for social media. If you ever need to grab a longer clip, you can always go back to your stream VOD and pull the clip after the fact. Next, go to the Advanced tab and in the Recording section, change the file name formatting to just a normal word like video. Next, check the box Overwrite if file exists. For the replay buffer prefix, you can leave this, this is fine. Lastly, in the Hotkeys menu, you'll just want to set a hotkey here to save replay. Now, you'll want to start the replay buffer, wait about 30 seconds, and then press the save replay hotkey. Now, in your designated save folder, you should see the video clip right there. Now, it's time to make our Vegas template. Open up Vegas and start a new project. For properties, the only thing I change here is the resolution to 1080 by 1080 so it's square. I make sure it's set to 60 frames per second, and then I set the resample mode to disable. After this, click OK, and we're ready to begin. Add your video file to the timeline, 
and then copy and paste the clip. Drag the second clip down and you're going to create a new video and audio track. Position the second clip directly under the first clip and then you can delete this second audio track as we're not going to need two of these. Now click this icon here to bring up the pan crop menu and then click this drop down menu and select 1 1 square aspect ratio and then X out. Next go to video FX, Gaussian blur and then add medium blur to the bottom clip. Now you can see that you have a video letterbox that's blurred out. Now that we've optimized this clip for social media, next I'm going to add a motion graphic to shout out my channel in a nice eye-catching way. This way it'll draw more eyes and if my video were to ever be re-uploaded, I have my channel name burned into the video which is good for protecting my content. Now if you don't have a graphic like this, there are plenty of ways you can go about getting them. The one I'm using was made by Sam Woodhall from Alpha Gaming. It's a slightly edited version of a free motion graphic they have available on their Discord channel. If you want the free version, I'll have the link to their Discord in the description panel below. So now I have this really nice looking video template, so now I can save this as a project file, which I'm just going to name Clip Sharing Template. Also, before moving on, let's render out this video file so we can set the project render settings. In the render menu, we want to make a new template so it's easier to render in the future. We're going to work off a pre-existing template, so we want to select Sony AVC slash MVC and then select Internet 108060. Click Customize Template and we want to change a few things here. Number one, change the frame size to custom frame and then put in 1080 by 1080. Next, change the bitrate to 4 instead of 24. The reason we want to do this is, number one, your stream is probably only 6 to 8 megabits per second anyway, and two, we want the file size to be under 15 megabytes if possible so we can tweet out the clip via Stream Deck. Now, name your template and click the save icon here. And I'd also recommend adding it to your favorites. And now let's render out this template clip and we're going to be good to go. But there's a problem. The template is properly configured, but there's no gameplay here. So what are we going to do? Well, the way Vegas behaves is when you import project media into it, it never actually moves the media around. Instead, it creates these .sfk files, which act as pointers, which tell the program where your project media is. So Vegas creates this file and then knows to look in that same directory for the video file it needs for the project. So, because we just set up OBS to overwrite this mp4 file we just edited, but we aren't doing anything with the .sfk file, Vegas is going to inject the new mp4 file into the project template with all of the same edits as before. So now, with everything I've set up, if I press the save replay button again, it's going to replace the mp4 file in my videos folder, and if I open up Vegas with the video template project file, you'll see the new video in the project every time. So, you can either get to rendering this file right away, or if you want, you can trim the file a bit in case you want to cut right to the chase with your stream clip, and then you're good to go. But, let's have a little bit of fun here. Because if I'm good to go with this full 30 second clip, using Stream Deck, I can automate this entire process into a single multi-action. So, let's create one. First, we'll start with the save replay hotkey. We're going to add a 2 second delay to give the computer some time to write the file. And then we're going to add a launch program action to launch Magix Vegas. Now the template project file should automatically load since it was the last one opened. Now this next part is a little bit more time consuming, but basically I'm adding a series of hotkeys that I would normally press to navigate Vegas to get to the render menu and render out the project file. Since Vegas remembers the last used render settings, it makes it considerably easier. Then in this multi action, I'm going to add a text string to name the video file. Now what's really cool here is we can add a send tweet action to the multi action. For the body I'm just going to put my Twitch channel link and for the attachment I'm going to choose the rendered video file because if you do this every time you render out a new version of that video file and overwrite it Stream Deck is going to reference that new file and upload that one to Twitter. So with one key press I can save a 30 second clip in OBS, I can open up Magix Vegas with a template project. I can render it out and then I can tweet it to all my followers and linking back to my channel. So I think that's pretty friggin' cool, but obviously the concept here is you can take this entire process and pick and choose which parts you want to automate and which parts you want to leave manual. Like for me, I would use Stream Deck to save the replay buffer and possibly open up Magix Vegas, but I would like to trim my video clip down so I can get right to the action right away. So when it comes to editing the video and then rendering it out, I would do that manually. 
but the saving of the clip, the opening of your app, and then tweeting it out can all be automated with a multi-action on Stream Deck, which is really cool. So to summarize, just by creating a project template in Vegas and just throwing on a couple of meaningful edits can really take your stream clips to the next level when you share them with your followers. If you use this trick, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below, especially if you added some of your own elements to this to really make it shine even more. Once again, my name is Steggy, and until my next video, I will catch you guys later.